Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the NEOS Academy. We are going to get started here in just a second. My name is Eric Hill, and I will be going through the Academy with you. Please, if you have questions, concerns, put them in the Q&A in the Zoom, and we will definitely get to them. Those that I can get to, I'll get to as quick as I can. Uh, just a little housekeeping. I do have the Q&A open to my right, so if I not that it's not that I'm not looking directly at everyone, but I may be looking at those questions, just dipping over there to make sure. Good morning, Frank. <laughs> Good morning, sir. How are you? And uh, just, you know, just uh, getting those answered as quick as I can. We are going to be going quick and fast. Uh, <clears throat> we got a lot of information to cover and a little amount of time. So the number one thing we're going to do is go ahead and get started. And we are talking about the Intake Pro today. Your layout manager, your dynamic forms, your automation, stage and statuses, and document and communication workflows. So the things that come with Intake Pro, and again, everybody's got the intake. <clears throat> when we look at the intakes that are here, getting to that Intake Pro is when we're getting into settings, going into that Intake Layout Manager, and this is where we can choose what type of case we're going to choose, MBA. That's the one I'm just choosing today. And we can set that intake up the way that we want to see it, entering the party information. And again, any of these that are blocked or grayed out, they're automatically going to be here. You can go through and add as many of these. The difference in Intake Pro is I can ask leading questions that come in. And with those leading questions, I can say that it's a dynamic item or a dynamic form. So when you go through, if the questions that you're looking for aren't, in the regular section area in your Intake Pro, you can type in, add a new question, add a new question, then add it to a section. The only thing that comes out of this is when we look at these sections, and I'm just looking at accident info, those sections that are questions from the Intake Pro, if you notice they have a pencil or editable, where those that are not, that are flat forms, that are going into NEOs, have the trash can and the setting button. The thing with this is questions that are on the Intake Pro, if they're not set up in the actual case type in the fields, it has nowhere to go. So you would essentially lose that question. That's why the Intake Pro or these questions for Intake Pro are leading you to say that, yes, we're going to accept this intake or leading to that area. One of the things that I put in was a family member notified after this incident. And, and I created a section called family notification. In the settings bar here, I was able to say, yes, show this section only if specific conditions are met. Was a family member, and that of course is saying notified, equals to yes. So now that I've got that dynamic form set up, when I go into an intake, I can click on the intake I want go through their intake information, go down to the accident information. Was a family member notified after the accident? If I mark that as yes, it triggers that whole other section now. Give me the family member name, phone number, and relationship. But please note that information does not transfer once the case is created. Unless you've set it up in your settings, in your uh, settings and case types, and that tab set up and have set those questions up here, then you wouldn't need the Intake Pro for those questions because those fields would automatically come over. This is more leading questions. And one of the things that I was looking at here too, also in talking at this was, um, have they met a threshold? Has this Intake met a threshold? Do we have a threshold on an MBA case? Was there a property damage threshold? Was there a uh, injury threshold? Was there something there that triggered that for us to take it because again, once we create this case, that intake comes out of your intakes and actually becomes a case. So you lose these questions. And I just wanna make sure everybody's aware of that. Same thing, if you notice family notifications here, if I delete it or take that yes out, that whole section goes away. Good. Also in dealing with Intake Pro, we have our automations. The coolest things in the world to do. One thing that we can do is follow up with a lead. We can click on details. How do I want to follow up? When a checklist status is changed, so I've come over to the right, 
and I've said, this is the code type case of, type of case, who is it assigned to? And when it's completed or done, I want it to send a text message. This is the template. And again, our templates are in our settings. And I have those document templates, email templates, and SMS templates. So I've told it, I want it to send the contact us template. Maria, I don't know, we can definitely find out. Um, toward the end of the session, I'm gonna put up the link so you can see the link. Uh, if you don't have the Intake Pro, how to sign up for it. Okay, I will definitely have that link there and set that up for you, okay? So, uh, and Maria was asking, do they have the Intake Pro? If you don't, I will have that link presented at the end of the webinar. And I'm not gonna close it down, you know, two minutes after we uh, close the webinar. I'm actually gonna leave it up for a couple minutes and finish playing some of the music that we were listening to when I started this up. Okay. So I've told it to send that text message when I mark that item as completed. So when I go back to the case, I can mark it completed and it just sent me a text message. I've got it set up to send to my phone, so it's here and waiting for me. Same thing too is, if we notice our stage and status, it's a lead, it's in progress. If we look at the details here, we've got it to change the status to proposal and send that welcome letter. So when it's changed to done, we can add that additional uh, item or, We can just look at those settings there. When it's changed, change the intake status to proposed agreement sent. Also to the right of that, on that checklist item, we've set up a document. So I can mark this completed. Then I can come down and click the plus sign here and go ahead and generate that welcome letter. It's got my case number, the name of the document, and I can change that if I need. The staff or who's creating it, who's typing it, please select the client. What type of document is it? Is it an agreement? Is it a correspondence? What is it? And then I can generate that document. If you notice it starts generating or creating that document for me right there on the fly, boom, done. So now I can go to my case docs and there's my welcome letter. Any questions about anything so far? Good, we're gonna keep going. Stages and statuses. Again, we're gonna look in our settings. Look in our intake settings and our workflow. When we look at our workflow or document and communications workflows, uh, it allows you, again, if you've got Intake Pro, to quickly do a retainer agreement, a referral letter, or an intake rejection. And give me one second. I'm going to answer a couple of questions. How do you set up the letterhead inside the templates? Uh, we can talk about that in a little bit, Mara. Can you have more than one task be completed on one checklist item? Chris, maybe I need a little bit more clarification. One checklist item is one task. Uh, what are you talking about? Are you trying to send a, send a text, send an uh, email and create a document? Email, okay. So one of the things that you can do that in your set, when we were there in the checklist, we had the details and that document associated to it. So we can do, change the status, uh, send a welcome letter. I can add another automation. Also, when it's done, I want to send a text message to and just keep building it.
I'm naming it, save. I believe that's what you were asking is how many different options we can do with that or add multiple. So I believe that answered that question for you. You do, Michelle, you do have to click that plus sign. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Donna, it would be, you would sign up for Intake Pro to get these options. It would be something you would sign up for. And I can, again, I'll have the link at the end of the webinar so we can all go through and go over this. Uh, Desiree, you can do this on regular checklist items. The automation, no. But the document creation and those things, yes, you can. Mara, if you want uh, help with your templates, it's best to probably reach out to the training department or your trainer and see if they can help you because they can help you with those templates. And I know our training department, I think they have a template session uh, every week. I just have to look and see when it is. And Mara, I can email you that too if you need it. Okay. So going back and looking at our settings, our intake settings, and accepting a workflow, accepting an intake, referring an intake, and rejecting an intake. If you have the intake pro, when you're in that intake, right here under actions, you can send that retainer agreement, send that rejection letter, send that referral letter right here, right off risk. You don't have to go anywhere special. You don't have to do anything extra. It's right here. Send the retainer agreement, click it. It's gonna bring up a preview of it. I'm gonna go through, send. And now it's created that document and sent me that document or whoever you put in as the recipient. And I've also got it set up to send a text message. All of those things were done and completed off of that one setting. This is the template I chose. This is the email that I wanted to send and the SMS text message. I can do all three of those in the Intake Pro just by clicking one button. Okay. And again, you get those three options for the rejection letter and the referral letter. I'm gonna take just a minute again and answer some questions. Not a problem, Laura. Can the intake summary be generated into a word or to an email? You're talking about this summary here, uh, Carla? If you wanted this summary done or a summary of the information, you can always create an advanced search report and have that information pulled in and give you all the information you need. Please, everyone, Ms. Diane Danwa, down at the bottom, I didn't see it till just now, for document coding assistant, direct users to the booking site. That booking site is right there for you. So now that she's given that information, please, by all means, click on that link and book some time with your trainer and they can definitely get that information for you. Diane, I'm gonna leave your question up since it's got the link. Eric, we cannot add multiple automations for the same checklist item if the assignee is the same such as any. How do we get around that? If you're looking for the checklist item, it wants to be assigned to a central person, not just any person. That's where that automation comes into play. You realize when you read the attendees question before giving your terrific answers. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Nunez. Can you please show how we can dynamically add party two if there's not one, two, three, three. 
So when you're in the intake, it's only giving you that party here. Where's the link? Mara, please look up. You'll see Diane's uh, link there. Rachel, it would be, again, we would create a custom report for you or an advanced search to pull that in. And then when we're looking at the intake settings, we talked about the workflow. And then we can look at the stages and statuses. The stages that are here, like lead, prospect, evaluation, uh, proposal, these are all standard and come in and are hard coded. But your status that's underneath that, the status that's underneath that, if you have Intake Pro, you can add that status and create the statuses that you want to have underneath here. Okay, Tracy. Oh, I'm sorry, Kyle. I didn't know that nobody could see it. Give me a second and I will put it in the chat. Give me one second. Eric, I will send out an email to all the attendees after the session that will include that link. Awesome. Thank you so much. I thought there was a chat here and there isn't. Good. So again, as Intake Pro, you have those standard or if you don't have Intake Pro, these are all locked fields for you so you can't add another status you can turn those fields off and on as you see but here i can actually add a status under lead so if we don't want in progress unqualified unable to reach or whatever you can turn those off and on and then add the status that you want how do you want it to be and then make it active Good. I know we've covered a lot of information talking about the intakes, the intake settings with the workflows. And again, being able to set that, uh, put in that retainer agreement template, intake template, rejection template, stages and statuses, being able to look at those checklists and set those automations up to do those things that you want to do. And to also be able to create those documents. Looking at our intake layout manager, choosing that case type and setting that intake up the way that you want to see it, creating those sections, those fields that you want and getting those implemented into the system. So again, if you have an intake sheet that you use at your office now, why not set it up in NEOs so everybody sees the same fields and it's just flowing. So that way, someone doesn't have to fill it out twice, three times. So I'm not transferring it from paper into the machine. Somebody can just type it into the computer as they're going along. Jenna, the question is, will the retainer need to be coded for each case type or will there have to be multiple retainers used for each case type? <clears throat> Usually your retainer is just pretty standard language that's across the board. This is what we're doing. This is what we accept. This is you know, our fee and those things. So I would think one retainer could work across multiple case types, not a problem at all.
And again, creating those questions. Again, we want those questions to be leading to us accepting or taking this intake. We don't want those questions pushed into the actual case. If it's a question of, hey, how did we do this? Or did they meet this item? Or have we met this? You know, again, when I was talking about thresholds earlier, it's a lot easier for us to say, you know, once that case is created, of course they met the threshold. That's why it's created a case or that's why it's in a case. Good. Are there any other questions at all? If not, I'm going to put up our final going away screen. Thank you for your, oh, thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm going to leave this screen up for about the next 10 to 15 minutes. So if you need anything or need that website, by all means, please use it. Hi, Eric. Um, yes. Someone had a question to show the process of adding a question again. Just walk us through a simple Not example. a problem. Give me two seconds. Uh, that's done. That's done. Could you please show me the process of adding a question again? Just walk through a simple example. Okay. So adding a question. So when I came down, and one of the things that I added earlier was, was a family member notified after the accident? And I triggered that family notification box to run off of if that was answered. If I needed to add a question to this family notification box, I can also say, Then I can come down here to the family notification box, click on, is this a spouse to, to our client? Click that. I did. And now it's there. It's safe. And now when I go back into Mr. Williamson's case, I can go back into the intake. Scroll down just a little bit to that accident information. Was a family notified? Yes. Is that, is this a spouse to our client? Yes or no? Laura, I hope that helps you or gives you the answer that you needed. Mr. Nunez, we will have a link to the recording. I see you, Mara. Thank you, Diane. John, the, usually when you say, is there, is there a preset system for these fields? Uh, when you're looking at the Intake Pro, there isn't, because we wouldn't even know where to begin with those questions. These are all questions that we've come up with at NEOS as we've been building or at Assembly since we've been building these uh, different intakes out. Again, I'm going to leave the webinar up for the next 10 to 15 minutes just so everybody can get this information. If you need anything, please stay in the Q&A and I will be answering.